It is easy for a cult to gain public recognition. These are groups of people that couldn't be further from the norm, who follow bizarre ideologies and sometimes commit heinous crimes. It's not surprising that the media gravitates towards these groups and covers them to the point that they become famous or infamous to the public. However, some of these groups fly under the radar and avoid public recognition entirely. And although they've faded into obscurity, their stories are still interesting. So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So here are five terrifying lesser known cults. Number one. Han Ming Chen was a former professor from Taiwan who was originally an atheist until he joined a religious group that changed his mind state and views on the world. He broke away from this group and started his own movement in the US. It was a sort of religion that had elements of Buddhism and spirituality, but also had a strange belief in UFOlogy, and most members believed that they had three souls each. Chen believed that the Earth was 4.5 trillion years old, and that the solar system was created because of a nuclear war. Although these beliefs were very much so out there, it didn't deter 160 hopeful members from joining and following Chen's group. These members were actually quite wealthy, so much so that they purchased a number of homes in Garland, Texas. Reportedly, one of their main reasons for moving to Garland was because it sounded like God's land. The group had become reasonably successful and Chen had managed to garner a substantial number of wealthy individuals to follow his ways. This wouldn't last long, however, because in 1997, Chen created a prophecy that would end up being responsible for his downfall. He stated that God was going to appear on every single television screen in America at 12.01 a.m. on March 31, 1998. A dubious claim, to say the least. The followers waited with bated breath for God to arrive, but surprisingly, this did not happen and his followers were more than confused. Chen stated that it must have been a misunderstanding between him and God, and for a while, his followers believed this, but by 2001, the group was essentially non-existent. Chen's whereabouts are also unknown and most of the members can't be traced in any capacity. It was a strange and short-lived cult and it might not have been as creepy as some of the other entries on this list, but it still shows us the power that some people can obtain for seemingly no reason whatsoever. 160 people, some of whom were doing very well for themselves, followed the beliefs and the logic of an absolute madman for years. Number 2 in 2005, a man who had once ran a website dedicated to characters from the game Final Fantasy VII told an interesting and bizarre story about his experience living with a number of mutual fans who took the game a little bit too seriously. Because of the website he ran, a woman who was role-playing as Professor Hojo, a character from the game, convinced him to move in with her and her partner, a woman who role-played as Genovo, another character from the game. The writer of this journal quickly realized that they truly believed that they were these characters, and that most of their other housemates were also playing as characters from the game. The writer took the role of Zack, who in Final Fantasy VII was a soldier, and this meant that he would have to do the heavy lifting around the house, get a job to support his other housemates, and generally be the breadwinner and heavy lifter for the entire household, all because it fit the narrative of the character he was portraying. Genovo would watch him like a hawk monitoring his time on the internet and ensuring that he did not complain or ask for help from anybody online. The couple would also refuse to bathe, clean, or do anything that would benefit the household, and this meant that the living situation was dire. The house was an absolute wreck, and eventually, Zack had endured enough and he left. After he wrote about his experience and posted it online, more and more stories started to surface about the suitably named Final Fantasy House and its tenants. Apparently, the couple continued their strange ways after Zack left. Two more people, Angel and Mela, moved into a house with the couple. This only made things worse and the household was rife with stories of abuse, manipulation, and more. While this was happening, a former tenant known as Greta started recruiting members for a religion that she had created. She would take money from these followers and even perform strange rituals with them that would apparently bond them together. The whole story is insane, and the characters in it are equally as crazy. It's an example of fandom being taken too far and the consequences of that. The whereabouts of most of these tenants are currently unknown, and as long as they aren't hurting anybody or making another needless cult, then it's probably for the best that they faded into obscurity so that this crazy situation can be put to bed. 
However, the story is a necessary and cautionary tale to the dangers of obsession, so it's a good one to retell for that reason. Number 3 In the late 1960s, a man named Father Yod opened up a health restaurant in Los Angeles. It was a foreign concept at the time, and it attracted some pretty big names, such as John Lennon, Yoko Ono, and Marlon Brando. Woody Allen's movie, Annie Hall, actually featured the business in one of its scenes, and it's fair to say that the restaurant was a major success. Father Yod was a charismatic and spiritual man, so with his newfound wealth, he decided to get a house in the Hollywood Hills and build a community of around 150 people who would live inside the house. Suffice to say, these living conditions were not pretty. It was a three-bedroom house, and most of the community were young and impressionable members who looked at their leader as some kind of god. But even with his successful business, his well-populated community, and his godlike image, Father Yod and his group were subjected to a lot of criticism. The obvious claim was that Yod was a cult leader. There was a rumor that he had 14 wives, and people believed that he was using his charismatic nature to manipulate people into doing his bidding. This was also occurring around the same time as the notorious Manson family were active, and many were worried that this cult would go down the same path. Luckily, this never happened, but as time went on, Father Yod started to see himself as more of a prophet or an actual god. He changed his name to Yahowah and started creating new bizarre rules. Mainly, he introduced polygamy into the community and allowed people to have more than one partner. And that is where the 14 wives claim came out of. Father Yod died in 1975 because of a hand gliding accident, and two years later, the group would dissolve without his leadership. Surprisingly, most of the members were grateful for their experience in this community, but others weren't so happy. Some claimed that the living conditions were terrible, others claimed that Yod was a manipulator with a god complex, and namely, his ex-wife Robin described him as a dirty old man on a lust trip. It's not as dark or as controversial as the other cults on this list, but it's still a fascinating story about the ideas of power, the concept of community, and the dangers of having an actual god complex. Number 4 Rock Terrio was a Canadian man who, in the mid-1970s, managed to convince a small number of people to quit their jobs, leave their families, and join a religious movement where the idea was to live in a community that was united and equal. The group was eventually formed in 1977, and it became quickly apparent that these ideas of unity and equality were only applied to the followers of the group and not to Rock himself. They would build the town and work exclusively for him while he would sit back and watch. Because of this, he compared his followers to ants and named the group the Ant Hill Kids. Around a year or so after the cult formed, Rock claimed that God had told him that the world was coming to an end and that the group had to prepare for this. This did not happen, but he was able to convince his followers that this was a miscalculation and the cult continued to operate. This is an example of how easy it was for him to manipulate his followers and how he used his charismatic nature to design a strict set of rules that his followers had to live by. The main one being that the female members would have to procreate with him in order to increase the numbers of the community. Rock fathered 20 children with 9 different mothers because of this and the community grew to around 40 members by the 1980s. Rock grew increasingly abusive over time and started punishing his followers to an extreme extent. Sometimes this included things like eating dead animals or even shooting each other in the shoulders, among other terrifying things. In 1989, Solange Bolliard, a member of the cult, was abused to such an extent that she died from the injuries. Rock was arrested that same year and eventually in 1994, he pleaded guilty to second degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes. He was easily one of the worst cult leaders in recorded history in terms of his manipulation and abusive behavior. He was eventually killed by his cellmate in 2011 and it's fair to say that he will not be missed. Number 5 Saul B. Newton was a psychotherapist from Canada who believed that the traditional American family was the root and cause of most modern-day mental illnesses. He believed that breaking from those conventional norms would set people free and fix their issues. He and his wife, Dr. Jane Pierce, decided to create the Sullivan Institute in New York in 1957 and started working one-on-one -on -one with several patients. So far, it doesn't sound too bad. They were helping people to figure out their issues, and they were experimenting with non-conventional techniques to do this. But obviously, if they just helped people in need, and that was that, they wouldn't be on this list. As you can expect, 
things started to get a little bit strange. Many patients were living in one of the three buildings that the couple had bought, and because there were no boundaries set in place, some of the therapists began sleeping with their patients. This obviously caused a lot of problems, but it wasn't actually the thing that caused the most controversy because there was another rule set in place that was even more problematic. Members were encouraged to cut ties with their friends and their families, and this was apparently to break away from traditionalism and help them ease into their new lives more smoothly. But it's more likely that this rule was set in place so that the members couldn't tell their loved ones about the unhealthy treatments that were occurring in these buildings. Eventually, the institute relocated to Orlando and, in 1991, Saul Newton died and the cult essentially withered away. Later on, former members would both praise and scold Newton and his ways. Some said it was unconventional but effective, while others said that it was tyrannical and abusive. Opinions were split, but the general consensus is that Newton was a cult leader and the Sullivan Institutes were one of the strangest communities to hit New York in decades.